after Abdul Kalam, I met him. He first, you know, said, "Let man of India." Oh, he is one. He is one. Nama karna, who gave the nama karna. Lead is a wonderful metal. At the same time, lead outside our system is very useful. The moment it enters biological system, it is deleterious. Fifty-three point five percent of children below twelve years in India, hmm. in some in metros, had their blood lead level about ten microgram per deciliter. I was shocked. I tell you, where children live, where children play, where children learn, where children sleep should be free from lead. You are saying all these things, but you are also living in the same world. How how are you managing your lead levels in <laughs> this hairstyle you have? Oh, so the <laughs> first time I saw that, I thought I was seeing, looking, seeing Dr. Abdul, Abdul, Abdul Kalam, a man of simplicity, man of down to earth. I tell you, it, it is very easy to become. A rich man, a man with ego, a man with power, but not a man of that simplicity. That's a challenge. Abdul Kalam told me, you know what is skill, professor? Skill is competence plus righteousness in the heart, righteousness in the heart, and also courage to speak out truth. How many of us have? I am still young. I tell you why. I can think, I can work, I can motivate. Which is highest one, sir? Kanka Gua. You did? Not yet. Oh, not yet, Mr. Watson. You're not 79. Yet. You still uh, go to go. Why Clive? not? Age is mere number. Don't <laughs> say because old, you are incapable. <laughs> Age is mere number. Though dilution is not a solution for any kind of pollution. I always say one thing. WHO said, uh. "My health is my right." I said, "No. If Einstein were to be born in India, I tell you, he would not have got Nobel Prize. His IQ would have been lower." From the depths of lead poisoning. will go to the peaks of the himalayas i would love to have worms in my fruit when i went to muktinath in nepal i went by helicopter i don't know when i got down my face was like a moon face brain is something which makes you see things which are not there brain is something which will make you understand what is there with clarity my uncle gave me 100 rupees per month after my past dsslc to continue my education don't ask but when there somebody asks try to give if you don't have borrow some money and give when somebody gives don't refuse accept let me thank our professor dr tupil venkatesh we will be like minded people mm. no thanks no excuses perfect then i'll give you a <laughs> namaste <laughs> pranam dr dr tupil venkatesh is a name synonymous with excellence in quality diagnostics high altitude medicine and lead free healthcare a pioneer in tackling lead poisoning in india he has worked extensively to uncover the dangers of lead exposure you are known as the lead man of india recognized as the lead man of india by dr apj abdul kalam today he serves as the ceo and director of the foundation of quality india and the national referral center for lead projects setting global benchmarks in toxicology and diagnostics their journey to bolivia is for the ninth chronic hypoxia symposium day 1 starts with dr sharan shrinivasan welcoming dr tupil venkatesh at the airport setting the stage for deep discussions on high altitude medicine Their journey leads them to meet Dr. Gustavo Zubeta Kaleha, a renowned expert in hypoxia, the son of Nobel nominated Dr. Gustavo Zubeta Castillo. The day also brings an encounter with Freddie Mamani's architectural marvels, his vibrant neo-Andean designs redefining La Paz's skyline. As the sun sets, they reach a high altitude viewpoint. taking in the breathtaking expanse of the Andean city. Day 2 marks the beginning of the Chronic Hypoxic Symposium. Dr. Tupil Venkatesh as president of the International Society of Chronic Hypoxia delivers the opening words. His session on the benefits of pranayama in hypoxic conditions is followed by a demonstration of the same by Dr. Pratibha Sharan. The day concludes with an in-depth session on mitochondrial adaptation at high altitude. chaired by dr sharan shrinivasan d3 takes the conference beyond walls into the landscapes that define hypoxia the journey begins with a ride on teleferico blanco the iconic cable car system of la paz where dr sharan shrinivasan interviews four leading experts dr tupil venkatesh dr gustavo zubeto kaleha dr akbar hussain and dr christian reis Suspended above the city, 
their conversations explore hypoxia's effects on human health and potential medical advancements. From there, a bus ride takes the group towards Lake Titicaca, the highest navigable lake in the world. They cross its vast waters by boat and are welcomed by Commander William Freddy, setting the stage for discussions on hyperbaric oxygen therapy, HBOT, a technology that utilizes high pressure oxygen to aid in recovery and treatment, especially in extreme environments. On day four, Rebooting the Brain, a book written by Dr. Sharan Srinivasan and co-authored by Dr. Pratibha Sharan is distributed to dignitaries. Dr. Sharan's talk on functional neurosciences that dwells into the synergy between neuromodulation and neurorehabilitation is followed by Dr. Jan Marino Ramirez's presentation on the hypoxic response of cardiorespiratory network where he references Dr. Pratibha Sharan's Pranayama insights from day 2. Also interviewed by Lucretia Gustavo Zubeta, their journey to Karaiko took them through breathtaking views of the Amazon rainforest. The conference concluded with a warm and lively lunch bringing the entire group together. On the final day, they arrive at the Oruru Festival, a UNESCO-recognized cultural heritage blending music, dance and tradition. Rebooting the Brain, powered by PRS Neurosciences.